a reading from the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, I hear so many disparaging me, terror from every side. Denounce him, let us denounce him. All those who used to be my friends watched for my downfall. Perhaps he will be seduced into error. Then we will master him and take our revenge. But the Lord is at my side, a mighty hero. My opponents will stumble, mastered, confounded by their failure. Everlasting, unforgettable disgrace will be theirs. But you, Lord of hosts, you who probe with justice, will scrutinize the loins and heart. Let me see the vengeance you will take on them, for I have committed my cause to you. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the soul of the needy from the hands of evil men. The word of the Lord. In my anguish, I called to the Lord, and he heard my voice. I love you, Lord, my strength, my rock, my fortress, my savior. My God is the rock where I take refuge, my shield, my mighty help, my stronghold. The Lord is worthy of all praise. When I call, I am saved from my foes. In my anguish, I called to the Lord, and he heard my voice. The waves of death rose about me. The torrents of destruction assailed me. The snares of the grave entangled me. The traps of death confronted me. In my anguish, I called to the Lord, and he heard my voice. In my anguish, I called to the Lord. I cried to my God for help. From his temple, he heard my voice, my cry came to his ears in my anguish. Glory to you, O Christ, you are the word of God. Repent, says the Lord, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. Glory to you, O Christ, you are the word of God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The Jews fetched stones to stone him. So Jesus said to them, I have done many good works for you to see, works from my Father. For which of these are you stoning me? The Jews answered him, We are not stoning you for doing a good work, but for blasphemy. You are only a man, and you claim to be God. Jesus answered, Is it not written in your law, I said, You are gods? So the law used the word gods of those to whom the word of God was addressed, and scripture cannot be rejected. Yet you say to someone the Father has consecrated and sent into the world, You are blaspheming, because he says, I am the Son of God. If I'm not doing my father's work, there is no need to believe me. But if I'm doing it, then even if you refuse to believe in me, at least believe in the work I do. Then you will know for sure that the father is in me and I am in the father. They wanted to arrest him then, but he eluded them. He went back again to the far side of the Jordan to stay in the district where John had once been baptizing. Many people who came to him there said, John gave no signs, but all he said about this man was true, and many of them believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. So we know we must be approaching Holy Week because uh, the situation between Jesus and what, whom, the, those whom John calls the Jews, who essentially are the the scribes and Pharisees who gather around the temple in Jerusalem, um, the situation is, is hotting up. Uh, they are more now outward uh, with their animosity and their rejection of Jesus, uh, no longer the veiled questions trying to trap him, uh, the, the deceit, uh, the underhand nature of the way of approaching him. Now it's avert. Now they're picking up stones 
<laughs> they want to stone him. So it's fairly clear uh, where the chips have fallen. Uh, but Jesus, still trying to explain, uh, what we see in Jesus is, uh, is a constant uh, beautiful harmony between love, which he comes to express in so many ways, in actions and in words, which is that infinite love of God, which is distinctly a merciful love when we encounter it in Christ, but also the truth. He never stops completely expressing the truth, so he appeals to reason. He says, if, if I'm not doing the works of my Father, then just ignore me. You know, why are you so threatened by me? Um, people might utter blasphemy and it wouldn't be a big deal. Um, but look at my works. Look at the evidence. Look at, look at what I'm doing. Look at that. Don't listen to me. Just, just, just see, see that as evidence. So he appeals to reason. He appeals to truth. Uh, and this, this aspect of our faith is, is very important because we too live in, a, in an, an, an existence where we need both truth and love to be constantly in harmony in our lives. When they're separated, and they can be separated, um, that's when things go wrong. And the, faith, and the church has always put forward this harmony of truth and love in Jesus, perfectly harmonized, inseparable. In another way it's said it is in its more theological language is the harmony of faith and reason. Faith and reason. So we need both. Um, faith without reason would be misdirected and could land on anything and make things more important than they need to be or even land on the wrong things. But reason without faith becomes a kind of rationalism which becomes dangerous uh, because we can be blind in what we, uh, what we think is true. Uh, we need, that needs to correlate with something greater than ourselves. Uh, it needs to correspond with, a, with a, an objective reality for, for reason to be in harmony. So faith and reason... Uh, need to work uh, in harmony with us. And, and Jesus is the one who steps into all this to help us to, to live those lives. Here we are approaching Holy Week, uh, and we're going to observe that in a very particular way as Christians, perhaps particularly uh, because of this period that we're living through, this period of, of demanding challenges. So we, we come to God with a sense of need. Uh, and here we are today uh, attending this Holy Mass. After Mass, we'll have the Stations of the Cross for those who want to stay for that where we will commemorate Christ's sacrifice and, and, and obviously more intently next week. That's exactly what we're going to be doing. We're going to be entering into those mysteries again. We're going to be thinking about his suffering. We're going to feel some of that sorrow ourselves. Uh, we're going to be passing through somewhat of the sharing of the suffering of Jesus so that we can uh, appreciate even more deeply uh, and more powerfully and more fruitfully uh, the extraordinary gift of his resurrection. Uh, how he breaks through sin, he breaks through darkness, he breaks through death, uh, and he opens up a way for you and I to really live. Now somewhere St. Paul says, if Christ isn't risen, then we're the most unfortunate of people. Our faith is in vain. If Christ isn't risen, um, and, and we could say largely, as it's always been, and, and we could see evidence of that in our own uh, time, that many people wouldn't understand what we're doing here today. Many people wouldn't understand why we're going to go through next week and, 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 and enter into all those uh, aspects of it. They wouldn't understand. They'd see that as, as pointless, useless. Why, why do all that? What's the point of sort of thinking about suffering and thinking about death and thinking about Jesus' uh, uh, extreme sorrow? Why go through that? Uh, and it's a valid question. Um, and in a way, we see the same thing in the scribes and the Pharisees here, the ones called the Jews. They just don't get Jesus. They don't understand, but also their hearts are closed. So both in the area of reason and faith, or truth and love, they're just closed. They're just closed. But once you open those capacities uh, to what Jesus is revealing and offering, it makes complete sense. The faith makes sense. What Jesus says makes sense. The evidence that he gave makes sense. What he's offering us makes sense. We know from our own experience that life at times presents us with many blessings and things appear to go well, but we know that also uh, the opposite is true as well. Suffering becomes part of human life uh, in so many ways. And, and that also correlates with what goes on within us, the problem of sin, the problem of not being the person that we, we know we could be. Um, and, and that life journey of trying to become that person. Well, with a little bit of humility, we could say that we, we can't solve that problem. We can't solve the problem of suffering. 
We can't solve the problem of our own potential being reached just on our own. We certainly can't solve the problem of death. That remains the, the fixed uh, evidence, as it were, of sin, and, and we can't solve it. We can push it back, and science has done all sorts of wonderful things when it's used in the right way. We can prolong life, life expectancy is longer now, but we can't fundamentally take that out of the human equation. And this is what Jesus is showing us, that he can, and he does, he has. Uh, and so it makes perfect sense, but it makes sense with faith. It makes sense with love, and it only, in fact, makes sense in love. All of next week will only make sense if we perceive that behind all those events and our entering into that sorrow is a God who is saying, I love you. You are my people. I've not left you alone. I've not left you orphans. You're mine. And yes, I know you're suffering, uh, and I know there is problems in your lives, but bring them to me and see the solution. See the solution in my son. Yes, it takes the gift of faith, and it is a gift. It takes effort. It takes dedication. It takes perseverance. It takes commitment. It takes practicing our faith again and again, day after day, year after year. But you will see the fruit. You will see the fruit in, in, in experiencing the love of God, in experiencing the mercy of God, experiencing the joy of God, experiencing the peace of God. It's real, and it makes a difference. And, and in that simple phrase when people talk about seeing the glass either half full or half empty, you know, we could apply that to our lives. Do we see it as half full or half empty? Well, the Christian life is always guiding us towards seeing it as half full, a life of hope, a life of faith, a life that sees the possibility of God helping us, even if he seems to delay, that nonetheless we go forward in the confidence that he would suffer like this for us, but that he would also rise again and prove victorious over sin and death. So uh, faith and reason working together in our lives, truth and love in harmony, uh, because they are in such harmony in Jesus uh, and what he's offering us makes sense. So let's go forward into this Holy Week with that confidence that Jesus comes to help us in all our needs and he still offers that to the entire world. So let's pray to live lives that in some way uh, embrace that as much as possible uh, and are signs of that tremendous hope uh, for the world in which we live.